Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ricardo, for the kind introduction. It's a great pleasure to be on this wonderful platform. And I'm going to share my experience of uh, multimodal and white fold imaging uh, using the state of the art Mirante SLO. I would also, at this stage, like to acknowledge some of my colleagues, uh, Gayatri, Akshar, Sham, and Navneet, who helped me collate some of these wonderful images uh, together. So Mirante is all about images, and I'm just going to take you through some of the interesting images of different sorts that we've captured over the time that we've been using it. And what you see here is a Valsalva case in which there is a large subvioloid hemorrhage as well as a few other subvioloid hemorrhages. And as you go to the white field component, you will also see a large subretinal hemorrhage, which is uh, over, the, uh, over the optic nerve head. And when you do the angiography, again, you see the central part as well as the white field view, and you see the masking effect of the subhyaloid hemorrhage. And then you see that the vessels are going over the subretinal component, and the images very clearly tell you which is the subhyaloid component, which is the subretinal component, and the whole extent of uh, the lesions here. Now you see a retinal detachment, uh, a magnified view of the central uh, area. You see the classic detachment with its folds and as you do the white field component, you will get the whole picture. It's like a single tree and the forest as a whole, and it's a beautiful image that you can get out of these. Once again, this is a tractional regmatogenous detachment. You see the proliferations and the traction, and there's a hemorrhage in the central part, and then you see two breaks uh, temporarily. So it's a tractional regmatogenous detachment, and you see the central part, and as you go to the white field images, you see the whole extent uh, beautifully as the extent of the detachment as well as how the proliferations and the tractions extend. And the, it gives the surgeon an idea about how uh, one should progress, as well as it helps us explain to the patient uh, the extent of the disease and explain the prognosis to them. This is very important for diabetic retinopathy, where many times you've lasered the patients and they come back with uh, new hemorrhages. And, and here you see that we do white field imaging to find these residual proliferations and leaks on which we could do more laser and stop the uh, further bleeding on these patients. And the angiography tells you exactly the capillary non-perfusion areas quite well. This is another case where you see on the inferior arcade, at the tip of inferior arcade, you see a proliferation new vessels and scattered limited laser all around in the white field view. And as you do the angiography, you see the extent of CNP areas as well as the proliferations. And also on the nasal side, you see in the peripheral field, a few areas of leak which would uh, require a lot of top-up laser uh, to regress these lesions. This is a case of von Hippel Lindau, where we know that very often new angiomas come, and most of them are in the extreme periphery. Uh, it's easy to miss them if you just look at the central part, and you need to constantly look out for new ones because they bleed and they can cause a lot of traction, and, and uh, very often the, you lose the eye. So here you see very nice peripheral images of new angiomas which are leaking, and they are a good guide for a surgeon to go back in and do a good laser or a cryo to them to regress them and then follow them up regularly for any new lesions which are formed. Apart from fluorescein angiography, uh, the Mirante does a fantastic ICG uh, image. This is a normal uh, patient uh, ICG image, a wide field view. Uh, as you can see, the nice choroidal vasculature coming up and you can also do a montage of these wide fields to give you a still wider view of uh, the wonderful uh, the choroidal uh, view that you can get with this. To show some examples of where it's used, the choroiditis case, you see multiple areas of uh, patchy choroidal lesions, and you do the FA on the left side, on the right is the ICG, uh, very classically showing you a complementary view of the choroidal level of the lesions uh, and, and the hypofluorescence, hyposinescence there in relation to that. And if you do a montage, you get a still more wider, beautiful view of the choroidal area and showing you the whole extent of, of, of the entity here. This is a case of Wokuanagi uh, Harada, VKH, and you see these uh, zero serous elevations uh, in the central part inflamed uh, posterior pole. And you do the FA and the ICG. I always like to do combined FA and ICG to get a good uh, view from both. And you see the fluorescein in the early phase is hypofluorescent, and the ICG shows you hyposinescent lesions as well. And as the phase progresses and you do a wider field, you will see that the fluorescein will become hyperfluorescent, which is typical of an inflammatory component, while the 
ICG will 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 keep it hypocyanosin and will will show you the the, the margins of all these lesions quite well. This is uh, again another case of uh, uh, the weak edge where you see a central as well as a wide field uh, view of this and a still wider field with the montage where you see extreme peripherally also there are there is a whole choroidal inflammation that you see which you are not seeing with the with the with the images which were taken only with the central area or the wide field uh, view. And when you do the ICG in these, you can see how well all the lesions are picked up, uh, hypocyanosin lesions. And as the phase progresses, they maintain uh, that the, the margins quite well, telling you the extent of the whole weak edge. And when you look at the fluorescein, the extreme periphery, which I showed you uh, in the color photo, is actually showing a lot of inflammatory leak. Uh, so, and the disc is uh, hyperemic. So the whole extent of the lesion is uh, is charted using white field imaging, using fluorescein on one end and the ICG on one end, and it, all these complement each other to give you an image like this uh, to tell you the extent of the inflammation uh, all all over in these cases. So here you see the whole extent in both the eyes of these patients, uh, showing you uh, extensive inflammation, and these patients need high dose steroids, immunosuppression uh, to regress and and get better. Another situation, we get uh, dengue here uh, quite often, and this is one of the patients who came with bilateral post-dengue developed inflammation in the eye, uh, and you see the central area being affected in both the eyes. This is the left eye, again showing you retinal lesion, and um, this is the fluorescein you see, which typically picks up the inflammation quite well, uh, and then when you treat it, you can see the regression taking place. We added steroids to the treatment uh, of these patients, and then uh, the lesion has regressed, the exudates have gone down, as you can see with the follow-up uh, both the eyes that we are seeing. Wonderful images which show the regression uh, almost as a depth perception of the lesion flattening out. This is a case of a old uh, choroiditis, possibly toxoplasma, and the patient came to us with a recent drop. And on the left image, you can see that between the two lesions, there is a reddish hue, which is pointed by the arrow. And, uh, and that's probably an SRNVM, a secondary SRNVM, which came up and reduced the vision. And we gave antivirus to the patient. And on the right image, you can see that the streak of blood has gone away and the lesion has regressed. And it is seen very beautifully on the autofluorescent image how those two lesions connect uh, with that regressed SRNVM, which it formed. Now I wanted to show you some some nice color photographs with an SLO. I think uh, Mirante does the best color pictures which an SLO can do. I've had experience of using the Spectralis and also seen Optus and all of them have a very strong greenish artificial hue while with the Mirante you get these very natural images to a large extent. And this is a patient with multiple lattice degeneration in the periphery, picked up very well and is great for documenting as well as showing the patient that, oh, see, you have these peripheral lesions and, and we need to keep you on a follow-up. If you have flashes, floaters, please come back to us early. We can treat it. So it's great for everything, documenting as well as explaining to the patient. This is a beautiful image. Again, a patient came with a, uh, a field effect in the inferior side. And when we saw the patient, there was a very small subclinical detachment with the horseshoe tear, the superior part. Again, very useful for us to document and also tell the patient that this is the starting of a detachment and needs early intervention. And this is a patient who came to us post-trauma and uh, sometimes retinal dialysis occurs and, and Miranta picks it up very beautifully, this whole, uh, the way the whole retina in the periphery has detached uh, as dialysis and the whole magnitude uh, or the extent of the lesion is, is seen very well uh, in relation to the retinal surface. This is a patient who had a pigmented lasered hole, which had come for follow-up. You can see in the extreme right, there is a hole which has laser pigment around it, and, and the lesion is well uh, repressed. And this is a patient, again, you see a tear inferiorly, which we have lasered and just documented uh, the extent and so that we can follow it up for any new lesions in the future. This is a patient, a silicon oil filled eye, also had a retinal buckle, and, and Mirante goes in very well with the silicon oil and everything and gives us a very natural view of the retina. You see the laser marks, you see the well-attached retina, the margin of the oil in relation to the buckle, uh, beautifully uh, capturing the details with almost natural colors.
we published this in the Retina today in the Jan Feb uh, edition with some of the images uh, which I have shown you just now. A few weeks back, I did a very bad case of PVR and, and I had to cut off almost 360 degrees uh, retinectomy and left only a very central island of macula and disc, uh, hoping that some vision would get preserved. And you can see this is taken just the day after the surgery. Uh, in spite of the inflammation, silicon oil, uh, Mirante goes in very well and captures a beautiful image of, of, of this island of retina which is left behind. And just today, this patient had come to me for follow-up 15 days after. And on the right, you see the image where the laser marks have now pigmented. Uh, the retina is very well settled. The patient has 636 vision and is quite happy uh, with that central uh, little island of vision that we could preserve. So it's a great tool to document uh, uh, these patients and then follow them up. This is a case of retinitis pigmentosa. You see these uh, altered granular fundus in the periphery. Uh, with a few bony spicules scattered around. And uh, when you see the autofluorescence, you see beautiful uh, fundus autofluorescence, that lesion in the macular area, and also the pigmentary alterations which are seen in the periphery are picked up quite well with uh, autofluorescence in these patients. Apart from white field imaging, I'm very impressed with uh, the, the colors it gives us even for the central nice lesions. This is a macular hole you see in the top left. On the top right, you see a toxoplasma lesion. On the lower left, you see a CSR with a nice uh, elevation. And on the, the lower right, you see a classic SRNVM. And look at the colors. This, this is an SLO-based color image, and it almost looks like a natural uh, image, almost giving you a depth perception-like uh, feel. And, and that is the most impressive part of, uh, of, of this tool. This is an optic nerve pit. Uh, you see the classic uh, hue of the, the detachment uh, extending from the disc towards the macula, uh, but it is seen much better uh, using autofluorescence. You can see the extent of the serous fluid. Also, the OCT is fantastic. You get a long scan. You can take the disc uh, uh, along with the whole extent of macula and see the whole extent of how this lesion extends from the disc towards the, the macular area and how the fluid collects and where are the schesis changes. So in every way, when you use multimodal imaging with these uh, kind of entities, it always uh, gives you more information and gives you a better idea of the extent of, uh, of the condition. Best disease, uh, again, showing you the egg yolk-like uh, appearance and is very well picked up. Uh, the margin it sees is beautifully seen on autofluorescence and also retro mode imaging, which is a unique feature of this, this machine where you see this uh, lunar moon-like images, uh, beautiful craters, uh, wherever there is an elevation or, a, or excavation, it, it gives you these very interesting images to document as well. So this is for pest disease and of course the OCT picks up and coincides with that lesion quite well. A patient who came with blunt trauma uh, and you see Berlin's edema and also a central hole uh, just next to the disc which is formed and you, if you pass the OCT it picks up exactly where uh, the hole is, the retina ends there, just uh, temporal to the optic nerve head, and, and there's another hole below that. So uh, again, multimodal imaging helps you document, explain to the patient also that, see, this is what you have. Uh, this is the hole that you have, and this is the extent of condition, and hence the prognosis uh, can be explained very well. Last uh, case that I'm showing you is presumed tenophobic toxicity. Now, this is documented quite less, and and we had one of these patients who came to us with a granular looking uh, fundus in the, in, in the mid periphery uh, from the macula extending. And then the patient was on tenophovir uh, from the history. But look at these beautiful uh, fluorescein angiography images showing you the window defect, uh, which is picked up, uh, which shows you the exact margins uh, of, of this particular uh, granular changes that is happening. And even better, you see with autofluorescence, you see the granular changes taking place on the pigment epithelium, uh, again, picking it up quite well uh, on, on this machine. When you do the OCT, you, you, you see the uh, outer retina where there's uh, atrophic changes and the pigmentary stippling. And if you see the uh, retro mode-like images, it will give you these uh, elevated small crystal-like images which are seen. So over and all, it's a great tool. Uh, to, to collate uh, different sets of imaging, everything with just one machine. Uh, you don't have to move the patient. 
uh, you can you can uh, do multiple things on the same patient to complement or or confirm your diagnosis uh, and and document it so that you can share it with your colleagues uh, you can learn from each other uh, and it's a great tool to collate all this stuff together we also uh, published this in the retina today uh, recent april uh, issue uh, of the tenophobia images that i just showed you and so in this brief time uh, i think this is the set of images i thought would be uh, useful for you to understand how this uh, beautiful slo allows you to take a variety of images variety of modalities all together some are useful for certain diagnosis and some are useful for certain others but on the whole captures wonderful images and and, and our team just loves using this machine uh, thank you very much for patient hearing